let's start from the beginning. At the end of last week's Parsha, all of Yaakov and his family came down to Egypt. Do you remember that? Yeah. And, there was, and all of his people were 70. Very good. There were 70. 70 people that came down. The, 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 the 12 sons of Yaakov? You guys know? Does anyone know? Ezra knows. Do you know the 12 sons of Yaakov? <laughs> how, about I start, how about I start with a song? Twelve sons of Yaakov, and everybody now is in Egypt, and they all had children. And you know what happened? They lived in a wonderful place in Egypt, and they had such a wonderful time in Egypt, they had lots and lots and lots of babies. They had lots of food, too. Good point. And they had lots and lots of babies. They had so many wonderful things. And they kept having more babies. And their babies had babies. And their babies had babies. And they had so many babies. And at a certain point, at a certain point, the Egyptian king. Do you guys know what his name is? Definitely uh, you know what his name is? Paro! Paro. Paro. Do you guys know what this is? Paro. Yeah, that's right. It's a Paro hat. Paro noticed something. He said, hey, there's a lot of Jewish people here. He said, what if the Jewish people decide that they don't like us anymore? What if they decide to help our enemies? So he got very, very scared that there were so many Jewish people. So he said, I don't want them here anymore. I want to make sure that they can't hurt us. Were we going to hurt them? No. No, of course not. But he got very scared. So he said, I'm going to make them our slaves. So he... What's a slave? What's a slave is a great question. A slave is somebody who works for no money. Um, is that fair? No. No, that's not fair. What about Paro? Does he do that, Paro? Paro got paid by everybody. He was a king. But he made all the Jewish people work for nothing. And he made them do terrible, terrible things. He made them take bricks and build whole cities, whole cities. And they can't do anything anymore. And they couldn't do anything for themselves. They had to only do what Paro said. Does that sound like fun? No. Nope. They can't do the things that they wanted to do. Yeah. And, and you know what else Paro said? But we he, noticed that he, he noticed that even though they were slaves, the Jewish people were still getting bigger. There were still more and more and more Jewish people. So you know what he said? He said, you're not allowed to have babies anymore. No more babies, Uh-oh. especially no more boy babies. <laughs> and the Jewish people said, that's not something we're going to do. We love babies. We want to have more babies, right? So they can keep. So they had to do it and have babies in private. They didn't let anybody know. In private? And one of those people. What is private? Private means so that nobody knows what, what's going on. Something that only you and your family know. There was one pe- There was one family. The daddy's name. The daddy's name was Amram. The mommy's name was Yocheved, and they already had two children. No, no. What's his older brother's name? His older brother was three years older than him. Aharon. Aharon. And he had an older sister also, and her name was Miriam. Oh yeah, and Miriam got a rash. Very good. So. Yocheved and, and Amram had another son. But they had this but they had this son after Paro said, no more boys. So they had to make sure to keep him secret. So when he was born So when he was born they kept him in the house. And they took care of him privately, so nobody knew. But what happens when babies what happens when babies get hungry? They drink milk. That's true. They drink milk. But what happens when they're hungry? And nobody knows that they're hungry. What do they do? How do they tell the mommy and the daddy that they're hungry? And they cry, right? And they start making noise. And this would be this would be a big problem. This would be a big problem for Amram and Yochavit because they were trying to keep it a secret. All right, guys, guys, sit down. Sit, sit. So Amram and Yochavit needed to keep Moshe safe, but also. So you know what they did? They put them in, in, in a basket. It was 
so smart what she did. Yocheved, Moshe's mommy, was so, so smart. You know what she did? She made a special basket. And she made that basket into a boat. So it floated it to the, to the river. Uh, where's, where's the water in? Uh, where's the water in Egypt? There's a very, very big river. It's actually one of the biggest rivers in the entire world. It's called the Nile River.
He was protected in the palace. But every day he went outside, every day he went outside and he saw the same thing. Every day, what did he see? He saw the Jewish people were slaves. But he knew that he was Jewish. But the people in the palace, did, did, they, did he uh, let them know? No. no. It was a secret. Only Bar Haru. He's in the palace. Moshe's in the palace. But then one day he went outside, and you know what he saw? He saw one of the Egyptians was hitting one of the Jewish people. And the Jewish person couldn't do anything. He couldn't help him. He couldn't help himself because he was a slave. And Moshe didn't like this at all. And he went over to the Egyptian. To the Egyptian? This is the Egyptian. And he's being mean to a Jewish person. Where's Moshe? Moshe's over here. And Moshe saw this and he said, This is not this is not good. This is terrible. And he went over and he made the Egyptian stop. He said, This is not allowed. But people were not happy because they said the Egyptians should be able to do mean things to the Jewish people because the Jewish people are our slaves. The next day, Moshe went outside and he saw two Jews were fighting. And he went over to the two Jews and he said, you guys are brothers. You shouldn't be fighting. And they said, oh, are you going to make us stop fighting just like you made the Egyptians stop fighting? Because everybody knows that that was you. Moshe realized, uh-oh, everybody knows. That means Paro also knows that I stopped the Egyptian. He knows that I'm not really an Egyptian. He knows that I'm really a secret Jew. And Moshe knew that he had to get out of there because Paro found out. And Paro realized that there was a Jewish person living in his palace the whole time. And he wanted to get rid of Moshe. Was this a baby? This is Moshe all grown up now, yeah. So Moshe had to run away. And he ran away really, really far. He ran. Do we have a map of Israel? Uh, yeah, you do. There's a map of Israel right there. Ah. He ran. Egypt is over here on the map. This is Israel. Egypt is over here. He ran all the way from Egypt, all the way across, all the way to here. All the way over here. This is a place in the Torah that we call Midian. Midian. Midian are actually cousins of the Jewish people. Remember Avraham? Yeah. Avraham, after he had Yitzchak, he had a whole bunch of other children. One of them was Midian. Midian. Midian had lots and lots of children. And they were very and they were very nice to the Jewish people. And when Moshe ran away, he went to the children of Midian. Midian, Midian. And there, he met a very nice and special man named Yitro. Yitro took care of Moshe. And Moshe helped Yitro, and he took care of Yitro's sheep. But you know what, you know what made Yitro really like Moshe? Yeah, but not, not yet. We're going to get there in a second. When Moshe was running away, he came to a well. What's a well? Exactly. A well is how is how you used to get water. You dig a really, really deep hole until you find water. You, you, and then you, you can put a bucket you, in that you, hole and you, you can bring take, out the water. You take a bucket and then and then someone's down there and then they they take the water and put it in to the bucket. Sort and of, then, yes. And, and then they bring it out to them. Yeah, well you don't you don't you, there's no one in the, in the in the well. You bring a bucket and put it down in the well, and then you pull it back Why up with a string. Are you wearing it all the time? I really like it. It's a good hat. Keeps my head warm. So, so Moshe came to a well, and you know who was at that well? A bunch of shepherds, and the daughters, the daughters of the man Yitro. And the shepherds were being very mean to the daughters of Yitro. Shepherds are people who take care of sheep. The men, and the shepherds were not being nice to the daughters of Yitro. So Moshe came over and he said, I see this all the time. People are being mean to other people. It's not right. And he went and he helped the daughters of Yitro. And then they told their daddy about this nice man, Moshe. And Yitro said, I want Moshe to marry my daughter. And his daughter's name was Zipporah. And Moshe married Zipporah. And he had two children. And he lived there for a very long time. 
That's a good question. Some people say 20, some people say over 40 years, maybe more. And then, finally, something very special happened to Moshe. After living in Midian for a very, very long time, Moshe, 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 that's right. <laughs> was taking care of Yitro's sheep. And his, he took the sheep very, very, very far away. But he took them always in the direction of Egypt. I think he did that because he always wanted to check to see maybe the Jewish people were coming. Maybe his family, maybe his whole nation was coming. But every day he went and he didn't see them. But one day he went up and he went onto a special mountain. The mountain was where later we got the Torah. Do you remember what it's called? Mm -hmm. Har Sinai. And he went up on Har Sinai and there he saw something very strange. A fire on a bush. He saw a bush was on fire, but it wasn't like a regular bush that was on fire. Because when a regular bush catches fire, the bush burns. It turns black, and it, and it falls apart. But this bush was alive. It had leaves. It was colorful. And there was still fire. And the fire wasn't eating the bush. Moshe was very confused, and he went close to the bush. He said, I don't understand this. And all of a sudden, he heard Hashem speak to him. Moshe's never heard Hashem before. And Hashem said, I am the God of your forefathers, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. And I have heard of the terrible things that have happened to the Jewish people in Egypt. And you, Moshe, are going to go to Egypt, and you're going to save them. And Moshe couldn't believe this for a long time. But finally, he said, yes, I'm going to do it. He went back to Gitro, and he said, I have to go to Egypt. And he went. He met his brother, Aharon along the way, and together they went, and they stood in front of Paro, and they said, let my people go. And what do you think Paro said? No, no. No, no, no. I, I will, will not let them go. go. <laughs> no, 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 no. I will not let them go. Right? May I have your attention, please? <laughs> Next week we're gonna find out what happened because Paro because Paro <laughs> had no. They had a snake. Oh yeah, that's what this is. They had a there's, there's a lot. There's a lot of words. They had snake. So one of the special things that Hashem told Moshe was that if Paro doesn't if Paro doesn't listen to you, if Paro doesn't listen to you, you can prove to him that I sent you because I'm gonna make you a his stick. And if Moshe would take that stick, Hashem said, throw it on the ground. He took it and he threw it on the ground. And what happened to the stick? It turned into a snake. And then... And Paul said, yes, yes, yes. So Moshe did this. Moshe did this in front of... Actually, Aaron did it. In front of Paro. And his stick turned into a snake. And Paro had his magicians do the exact same thing. But you know what happened? Aaron's snake ate all the other snakes. Wow. And so many other special things are going to happen in next week's Parsha. Yeah, so